adding to our prepper pantry and our emergency supplies. Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet, but we do have a prepper pantry haul for you this week. We've got some good stuff. Um, we actually have a couple of bigger items included in this haul, things that we've had our eyes on for a while, we've had on our wish list for a while, and finally managed to add those to our preps. But with that, I just want to um, give a little reminder that always take care of your basic things first. Always make sure that you're starting off your preps with food, with water, with some medical supplies. Those are the things that you definitely are going to need and you will always use. And then when you feel like you've got that a little bit more under control, that's when it's time to move on to some of those bigger items. It is tax return season and if people are getting um, tax returns back, the best thing to do with that money is to number one, pay off any debts that you have. And number two, take the rest and invest it in things like food and things like supplies, the things that you're gonna need. Once you've managed to build up a good food storage, you're gonna find that that's gonna save you money over time. And so that's gonna allow you to budget a little bit more money for those bigger things that you wanna add to your preps. So without further ado, let's see what we've added to our prepper pantry this week. So I'm just gonna start right over here with some things that I got from Amazon. Now these are just a few um, refill first aid type of items. This one is Allocane Emergency Burn Gel. Maximum strength, it's got 4% lidocaine. Um, I just keep this in my trauma kit and all of my little first aid kits to have stuff on hand for burns. In our big first aid kits like at home and the big one we keep in the car, we have room for things like tubes of, of things like this, tubes or bottles. But for smaller kits that you don't have room, I love having individual packets. So this Allocane is a good one. This did have a, a paper lid on it. This was a box, but it came damaged and the lid just fell right off. So as far as I can tell, it's just um, the box that was damaged. I don't think the packets inside are damaged. so. I'm probably not going to make a fuss about it. And then this one here is another little packets of burn cream. This one's a cream. The Alicane is more like a gel, just different things. These packets are a little bit smaller. Um, I like to keep them both on hand. This is a little refill packet, 10 packets, and these are super, super inexpensive. So this box was damaged also. I guess my whole package was kind of treated roughly, but but this item particularly is very, very inexpensive. And so I sometimes use this as a filler if I need a fifth item um, to get my subscribe and save up to five items to get the maximum discount. I'll throw something like this in if I'm low on it because I figure I will always use this eventually. And this right here is another very inexpensive item, just a dollar or two. Um, it's a two pack of trauma pads that are individually wrapped and sterile. Um, it's always a good idea to have plenty of things for wound treatment and keeping wounds clean. In emergency situations, that's going to be paramount to keep um, infection away. And if you have a wound, it requires a lot of, um, of things to treat it. And you need to have a lot of gauze and a lot of things like that to keep it clean. So I always grab a couple of these um, quite often. Now this is just a razor. This is a... This just popped up as something it suggested to me and it was super, super cheap. It was like $2 and something on subscribe and save. And I don't remember if it was um, for my first order, why it was so cheap, if it was just a really cheap, it's um three cartridges in one handle. So it's a reusable one. We tend to use a lot of disposables, but I'll honestly get whatever razors I can get um, for cheap because we go through a lot of them in our house. We have quite a few people who use razors and for emergency situations, number one, you're gonna wanna stay clean and comfortable and have what you need for your personal hygiene. But um, on a more serious level, a lot of times if you're putting on some kind of PPE, like a gas mask, for example, you might need to be clean shaven for men um, to achieve a good fit between the mask and your face. And that could be true of other situations as well. So it's a good idea to have plenty of razors in your emergency supplies, just in your personal hygiene stuff. Now this was something that I grabbed because I had somebody who was having trouble um, opening the pop top on the Thrive Life pantry cans. They just have a pop top like that. And I know I had seen um, something like this so I went looking on Amazon and I found this and it was pretty inexpensive and I just thought it would be a handy thing to have around. So I grabbed one of these. It can also help if you have uh, nice fingernails that you wanna keep from damaging, which obviously I don't right now, but maybe someday. So then I've got some seasoning type of items. Now this right here is um, uh, pink curing salt. This is, it's called prog powder on here, but it's pink curing salt. 
Um, this is something that's used for curing meats like it's used in jerky making. And what I got it for particularly is corning beef, um, corning my own beef. So this is actually the really bad stuff that's bad for you in cured meats like jerkies and hot dogs and stuff, sodium nitrite. It's not very good for you, but it really does help with keeping meat from going bad and preserving it for a longer term. So it's something that I just have on hand to use very sparingly, obviously. I think in my beef corning brine, I think there was maybe two teaspoons in a whole gallon of brine. So it's used very sparingly. And obviously everything in moderation. So next I got this big gallon jug of the chopped um, minced onion, like the dried minced onion. I ended up picking this up because I think I might make um, some homemade onion soup mix, like the little packets, the Lipton packets. I use those a lot as an ingredient in cooking. And I've never been too worried about uh, making my own or anything like that because I just buy the cheapest, you know, store brand or Dollar Tree. It's pretty inexpensive. But I just kind of got a wild hair and decided maybe I would try making my own. So I got this whole big jug. Um, you will see a little bit later on, I did buy some onion soup mix in bulk also. But I thought I would mix up a batch of homemade also. So I grabbed this big jug of minced onion. This is something that um, we will use. Now this packet here, this is, um, oh, it says oyster sauce stir fry. Now you know that I love making meals in a jar. Um, I love having them on hand. They're so convenient for emergencies because all you have to do, they're shelf stable for years and years. And all you've got to do is add a, some water and a little bit of cook time and you've got a really good hearty homemade meal that you put together yourself with the ingredients that you want in it. Um, and I love trying to turn our family favorite uh, dishes into jar meals. And so I'm always looking for different powdered um, seasonings and things like that, um, ingredients that we use in our meals. So I was looking for powdered oyster sauce. I've been looking for a long time and I haven't had a whole lot of luck, but I did find this oyster sauce stir fry. I only got one packet to try because it actually was fairly expensive for what it is. It's just a small packet. And I'm not even sure if it's going to, you know, impart the flavor that I want, but I did get one of these to try. And then I got this um, sort of big bulk pickling spice. This one had good reviews and I needed um, a bigger thing of pickling spice. This obviously is used in pickling, but this also is used in corning beef. And then I did grab this Watkins onion um, soup and gravy base. This is a little bit different than your typical chicken and beef and things like that. So I thought that this would be a good thing to have in the pantry. So the next thing I got was this um, case right here in this box. They were all neatly in the box and I thought I had them displayed and then they all kind of toppled out. So. I just left them like this so we can see what they are. These are these little bags of pasta. They're seven ounce bags of pasta. And they have all sorts of different cute little shapes. These are stars and I got these from Amazon. Now my Save-A-Lot does sell, you'll see later on, I did pick up um, a couple packages. They sell, I think, two different shapes of this brand but they don't have the stars. Now these are super cute for soups, like a chicken and stars soup. Or I saw a recipe that inspired me to grab these. It was like a tomato and stars soup. And they would be really great for soup mixes in a jar if you're doing soups in a jar because they're a very like small shape so they'll fit in nice and compactly. They're seven ounce bags now. My Save-A-Lot sells the ones that they have I think for 56 cents a bag. So I grabbed these stars from Amazon. It was a case of 20 and it was $11 with my subscribe and save. But I did make a mistake because I just went and checked um, to confirm the price before I did the video and I noticed that they actually sell a single bag for 48 cents. And so I actually could have bought 20 single bags for less than what I bought the pack of 20, but I didn't even notice that when I was um, originally purchasing these. I just noticed that that was a pretty decent price compared to what I know they sell for at my save a lot. But these are gonna be really great for, like I said, soups, for meals in a jar, things like that. If you had a, like a baby or a toddler who was kind of just starting with um, the chunkier solid foods, this would be really great to add into something like that if you cook them soft. So, and then next I've got a bag of bread flour. This is gold medal bread flour. I did grab this from Amazon just because it was cheaper than the bread flour that I could get at my local Walmart or my grocery store. Now I'm sure I've used bread flour before and have had bread flour, but typically if I go to make bread, I just grabbed my all-purpose flour. And so I just kind of been reading a lot more bread recipes and I just kind of got inspired to get a little bit more technical with it and use some bread flour. Now bread flour is just better for bread because it has higher gluten content. Now I know we're kind of conditioned to think of gluten as a bad thing nowadays, but if you're not sensitive to gluten and you don't have like celiac disease or something, it's not a bad thing. It's actually for making bread, it's it, it makes gives the bread a better texture basically. So. It's actually desirable for making bread. So 
I grabbed this bread flour. You'll see in a little while I did grab some more bread flours. When I get on a kick, I really get on a kick. But this was a good price in my subscribe and save and it was a better price than what I could get locally. And then I did get another bag of this low and no sugar pectin for making jams. I love making jams and I found that buying my pectin in bulk is a lot more affordable than buying the little boxes at the grocery store. So I do buy my pectin in bulk and store it in mason jars. Now I've got a couple of cases of ready to eat foods. Now this is the Campbell's soup. This is the this is the cheddar cheese condensed soup and this is something that I use as an ingredient in quite a few meals that we make. Not quite a few but I have several meals that I make that use this as an ingredient. So I do go through this. Um, casseroles mostly in crock pot dishes and things like that. So I found that for myself, I can get a better price usually buying the case through Amazon on subscribe and save than I can buying the individual cans at Walmart or my grocery store. Now, depending on what, what grocery stores you have, and if you know your sale cycles, some grocery stores may put this on sale for a better price per can, but none of the grocery stores near me usually have that good of a price. So, and then this one back here, I'm going to be careful with because I opened this one up also and they're starting to topple, but these are another case of the little chef boyardee mini raviolis now these are great because they're ready to eat um they're meant to be heated but if you couldn't heat them you could eat them without heating for sure they're pretty small so if you have children younger children then these are great for um, having on hand for emergencies they're great if you want to pack up 72 hour kits if you want to throw ready to eat food in a go bag or something if you have uh, adults and older kids you might need to use two of these if you use these but probably older adults, they might also be okay because I think as we get older, our appetites tend to decrease. I know my grandmother is always, you know, saying it's too much for her when she has her dinner. So that might be good for that as well. Um, my latest cases of mason jars. I feel like I'm always forever buying mason jars because at this point, like we are, I mean, I feel like I have a whole wall of mason jars downstairs, but the sizes that I use most frequently... I do tend to run out of because right now we are filling them faster than we are emptying them which is a good thing because we're you know bulking up our food storage but I do have to keep buying jars now they are reusable once you empty them out but like I said we're filling them faster than we're emptying them the wide mouth quarts are one of my most commonly used jars I make all of my meals in a jar in those and I also can a lot of things in those like like I've just been canning a lot of corned beef and boiled dinner and Italian beef and all sorts of things like that in these jars so we've used quite a few of these um, the regular mouth pints I don't use these as often but I do use them for more liquidy things like my lemonade concentrates and salsas and things like that and so I was running low on these and then the half gallon jars I have not ever canned in these you're not supposed to can in the half gallon except for like grape juice and orange juice or something. I can't remember what it is that you're supposed to can in the half gallon, but I know people do can in them. And I think I would like to try it eventually, but I just haven't yet. But so, so far I basically use them for dry goods storage. Um, mason jars are very, very airtight. So they're really good for anything that you really need to keep airtight, like powders. If you repackage any of your freeze dried foods in smaller quantities, you know, because you don't want them to get stale, if you don't use them that quickly, mason jars are great for that with or without an oxygen absorber. If you're going to use them up fairly quickly, they really don't let any moisture and air in. So if you're storing for long term, you're going to want an oxygen absorber. But if you're going to be using it within a year, I definitely think that it's fine not to just have the lid on tightly and make sure you're using the mason jar lid and not the plastic storage lids that aren't necessarily airtight. So that was Amazon and the canning jars actually were from Walmart. That really tends to be the best place to get canning jars. I always get my canning jars there. They're cheapest there. Hard to find sizes. Um, hardware stores sometimes are better, but the prices aren't as good. So but next, I've got my Thrive Life order. Now, the first thing I've got here are a couple of the complete um, emergency meals. These are freeze-dried in these pouches. They have a 20-year shelf life. And these are three servings. They're a little bit bigger than your typical, like, Mountain House um, and those kind of meals. But they're the same type of idea. Just add hot boiling water right into the pouch if you want. Or you can put it in a different container. And then just let it set and you have a complete meal. This is the breakfast skillet. And I've got two of them here. Now, you've probably seen me buying... Um, a bunch of these meals because they're pretty new so I've been trying buying them to try them all out but when I bought the breakfast skillet it was I only bought one because I looked at it and the price was ridiculous because most of these are pretty um pretty reasonable for what they are and so I was surprised at the price and I just bought one to try I said you know and it was because of the price of eggs at the time of course the price of eggs has come down so 
Thrive Life announced that they were going to have new prices, a lot of price changes happening at the beginning of March. And I just remember thinking, oh, great, prices are going up because that's just what we've seen lately. That's the world we're living in. The prices are going up on everything. But I was pleasantly surprised because, yes, while some prices did go up, more prices actually went down than went up for a variety of different reasons, but I was very happy to see that. And the price on this breakfast skillet meal went down considerably. So I was able to order the extra two that I would have ordered the first time and get them a lot cheaper than I did the first time. I just like to have one to try and then a couple to stash away. So that's why I've been getting three to start with. And then we will probably stock up on more of our favorites. Um, they did just come out with variety packs for people who want to try because they always sell them as a single meal and then they sell them in a 10 pack of the same meal and you get a better price if you buy the 10 pack but that's a lot of one meal so now they've come out with variety packs where you can try like they have a one pack that has all of the meals in it it's a little bit cheaper than buying them individually but so that's something that they just came out with so we haven't had a chance to take advantage of that yet i bought them all individually but next i've got all of my canned goods from thrive life Everything I have here is a family can except for this one. So the family cans are the gallon size and this is the pantry can which are the quart size. This is the one I showed you that had the pop top. The, pan the gallon cans generally just need a regular can opener. And I do always buy everything in the gallon cans pretty much when it's available in that because you do get a much better price per ounce, better price per serving of course buying in bulk. This is the only item I got this time in the pantry can, the smaller can, because this is not available in the bigger can. This is one of the sauce mixes. It's called Espanol, but it's basically beef gravy. I love these sauce mixes because they're gluten-free, which we don't have to worry about, but they also, um, they blend in really well, really nicely. Um, we like the flavors. And of course, they have a long shelf life when they're stored in the cans. Once you open them, you're supposed to use them within a year. But I go through these pretty quickly. I actually wish that they did make these in the larger cans. I feel like a sauce is kind of what you need to take your ind your individual ingredients and make them into a meal. Like you got your vegetables, you've got your meats, maybe your rice, your pasta, whatever. And to make that into a meal, I really feel like a sauce really completes that. And then everything else I've got are single ingredients. So these are all freeze dried ingredients. They've got a 25 year shelf life as long as they stay sealed in their cans. Once the can is opened, they have a shelf life of a year once opened, which is more than plenty. There are some people who go through them, the ingredients more slowly. And so they do like to get the pantry cans for that reason. But honestly, just for cost savings, I would always buy the bigger can. And like I said, you could reseal this gallon size can into smaller, say quart size mason jars and they're going to stay pretty airtight. You can use an oxygen absorber if you want, or you could use a desiccant packet. And then as long as you keep them out of the light, the direct light, so that they don't fade the colors of your beautiful fruits and vegetables, they're going to be, um, they're going to stay perfectly good. This one is pepper jack cheese, shredded pepper jack. This is a new product that they just came out with, and I love the freeze-dried cheese. It's so handy to have on hand because you know, you don't really have much, many options in shelf stable cheese other than that. So, and I love pepper jack cheese. So I definitely had to try this one. So we grabbed a can of this and then I've got a couple of fruits, peach slices here and pineapple. Those are both really tasty. And then these are some of our favorites here, the mushrooms. I love the mushrooms. So I got a thing of sliced mushrooms and then this is the diced beef. So these are like little square chunks of beef. They have several different types of beef. They've got ground beef, they've got the diced beef, and they've got shredded beef. So depending on what your recipe is, like I like to use the diced beef in beef stew and things like that. And I made some beef stew jar meals over the winter. So I grabbed another can of diced beef. And then the last two cans I've got back here are some vegetables. I've got green beans and butternut squash. And I did also use both of those in my beef stew. I didn't get a video made on the beef stew jar meal. And now that winter is kind of winding down, I'm thinking there's not going to be as much interest in stew. So I probably will hold off and do a video on that maybe coming into next fall. Now I got one other thing here that's related to freeze drying, but this wasn't from Thrive Life. This actually is from Harvest Right. This is a little cookbook. And I have a massive obsession with cookbooks. I always have loved cookbooks. I used to sit and read my cookbooks at night. Um, when I was in college instead of reading a novel or whatever. I have a big cookbook collection and sadly my cookbook collection mostly lives in the attic now because the shelf that I had it on in the pantry collapsed under the weight of all the cookbooks. And nowadays with the internet it's kind of easier for me just to go online and find the recipe from my cookbook than it is to go upstairs and drag out the cookbook. So but I do still love cookbooks and I do get cookbooks if they're like specialty type of cookbooks that you can't find 
um, other places like canning cookbooks, meal in a jar cookbooks, things like that. So this is a freeze drying cookbook and it's actually pretty cool because it's a really cool book. It gives you some information about freeze drying, like things you can't freeze dry, um, enzymes and bacteria, and just some different ideas of things that you can freeze dry, little snacks, and then as it goes on, it gets into, it talks about using freeze dried um, foods for camping, for outdoors, things like that. Baby food, this is honestly freeze dried food, whether you freeze dry it yourself or, or purchase it. If you purchase it from a reputable company that has good quality food, um, freeze drying maintains the most nutrients of any other food. So this is the healthiest food that you could give your baby, honestly. Much better than the jarred foods. Pet food, um, freeze dried pet food and pet, pet treats is a big thing um, nowadays. Of course, doing gifts, which we have done. We did a lot of gifts um, from our freeze dryer at Christmas time. We gave all of our nieces and nephews um, freeze dried candy and or the babies. We gave freeze dried little fruits. And then after you get past all of this information section, you do get to recipes. And these are recipes that are designed for freeze drying so that you know that they're going to work well. They don't have too much fat. They don't have... Um, you know, anything that's going to make them not be good for the freeze dryer. So because I have such an obsession with cookbooks, I was really excited about this book. It's got beautiful pictures. It's a beautiful little book. And I'm really excited to work out of this. So next I got my Azure Standard um, drop for this month that I just went and got. Now, if you're not familiar with Azure Standard, go ahead and check the description box below the video. Um, I'll have a link where you can check out the company. I also have a video that I did that really kind of talked about how you go about shopping with them, talked about the company, um, talked about things like that. So I'll link to that as well. They're really a great company to purchase food from and they have amazing prices. I am a huge cheapskate. I'm usually going to go with the lowest price regardless of quality. I'm not that kind of person that's going to pay extra usually for organic or, you know, free range or any of that stuff. Price is my huge driving factor. And I still end up going to Azure for so many things because I compare the prices and their prices end up being the best. At least for what I have available in my area, I know some of you might have something like a Winco. I've heard a lot about Winco. They have a good bulk food section. I don't know what their prices are like. But for me in my area, this beats everything on most things. So I got a bag here of raw pistachios. We use a lot of nuts in our home and we store a lot of nuts in our home because it's a good thing to have you know, a good supply of in your prepper pantry. We use nuts for snacking. We use nuts for baking. We use nuts for like topping salads and all sorts of things. And we use all sorts of different kinds of nuts. And lately, whenever I've had to replenish my nuts, I have gone and checked prices and Azure Standard has won out for a lot of nuts lately. So I got these raw pistachios. My daughter loves pistachios. They're very healthy and um, more keto friendly type of nuts. So I like them as well. And these are shelled. They don't have the shell on them. Now this is a little um, canister of a seaweed granules called dulse, I think is how you say it. Um, if you remember recently I bought some kelp, I bought um, animal grade kelp and human grade kelp just for like a little nutritional supplement. And this is similar, so I'm gonna try this one as well. Now the seaweeds have a lot of minerals. This one is actually from the main coast. That's another reason I went for it. I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. So seaweeds are high in iodine and that's something you actually have to be careful of to make sure that you don't get too much iodine. So I literally only use like a pinch of these things. I haven't tried this one yet. Of course, I just got this one, but I have been using the kelp and I just use a pinch every day, but you can add this to a lot of things. It's got some great minerals in it. When I use the kelp, I don't notice a taste or anything like that. And then I got a couple of these bulk um, little dip mixes. Now, I heard really good things about this vegetable and herb dip mix that they had. I heard great um, things about it, so I thought I would try this. You can make a dip out of it. You can use it as a seasoning. I went to look for this on their website and then I ended up seeing that they had the onion soup and dip mix in like a bulk package. This isn't actually as big as I thought it would be. It's one pound. I thought one pound would be a little bit bigger, but I'm gonna try this and see how I like it. Gluten-free, GMO-free, no HVP. I'm not even sure what that is, but um, there's, they have amazing quality standards. You can check that out on their website. So I know anything that I get from them is going to be clean. I totally trust their quality. And then here are some more bread flours. I told you I am on a kick. They're just three different bread flours that they had. They're actually all organic. Like I said, I don't typically pay extra for organic, but I just thought I would try these. That's why I got a small package. 
I know you'll see these big bags in the back, like 25 and 50 pound bags, but don't think that you have to buy in these big bulk packages to shop from Azure because they usually have everything in, you know, all different size packages down to like a pound or less and then bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course you save more money when you buy it in the larger packages, but it's totally up to you. Oftentimes I'm starting with a smaller package if I'm not sure that we'll like something or something like that. And then I can get a bigger package down the road if I end up liking it and wanting to stock up. So these are just three different bread flours. This one is whole red wheat. This one is whole white wheat. And this is just alt ultra unifying unbleached. I'm not really sure what the difference is. I'm going to have to go back to the website and refresh my memory but hopefully I'll get a chance to try out some breads with these flowers. Now this right here is something that I talked about when I did my video when we made our own chicken feed. This is the poultry nutri balancer. I didn't have it, I'm not using it. I'm using kelp and um, brewer's yeast instead for the nutrients, but I did think that this was a good thing to have on hand. Um, if you keep any kind of poultry, chickens, ducks, things like that, I thought this was a good thing to have on hand and they had a great price at Azure. Now you can see this is the shipping label and I this is the route that I'm on and we our drop has this butterfly symbol so when they're unloading the truck you're looking for all the butterfly I mean they have it pretty well organized but if it doesn't have a butterfly we know it's not ours so and then this is another big bag 25 pound bag of split peas now I did just recently get a bag of the split peas I'm using the split peas in our chicken feed this is one of my favorite ingredients because it's pretty low cost getting it from Azure Standard it's much cheaper per pound than it is from like my grocery stores and it's high protein so it's lower cost and higher protein so it really is great for the chicken feed and it's also something that we use as well so i'm storing one item that has a lot of different uses and i really love that and i just thought between the fact that i'm using it in my chicken feed and the fact that it's easter's coming up in fact you'll probably be seeing this video on easter so i'm going to be stocking up on cheap hams or i have actually been stocking up on cheap hams and we always make split pea soup and we have ham and i was thinking i would probably can some split pea soup and things like that so we'll probably go through quite a bit of the split peas just for our own uses as well as for the chickens so i grabbed another 25 pound bag of this now their stuff all comes in these paper bags usually and so obviously i'm going to be repackaging this and then this next bag behind here is some hard white wheat there's three basic types of wheat i mean there's more than three types of wheat but the three main basic types are the hard red wheat, the hard white wheat, and the soft white wheat. And they're just good for different things. The hard red wheat is more like a typical whole wheat bread that you would think of that's more brown and nutty. And then the hard white wheat would be if you wanted to make like a white whole wheat type of bread. And then the soft white wheat is more, it's going to make more like a pastry flour. Now, of course, these are wheat berries. So to make a flour out of them, you would need to grind them you'd need to have a grain grinder. And the benefits to grinding your own flour is that all of the nutrition is in the whole grains. And the minute that they're ground, they start losing their nutrition really quickly, like within hours. Within days, they've basically got nothing left. So when you buy flour from the store, all the nutrition is gone, even if you're getting like a whole wheat flour. And so it's really, really better for your health to be grinding your own. Like I should be grinding these flours rather than buying the bread flour. But right now for me, time is, is a commodity that I don't have a lot of. And so I know that I'm going to be more likely to work with this stuff if I have the already ground flour and I'm going to be storing the wheats, the wheat berries, and we also use them in our chicken feed and you can sprout them. There's all sorts of things you can do with them. But if you don't have a grinder and you want to store wheat until you get a grinder, just know that you can cook these. You can boil them and cook them like a grain. You can make a pilaf out of them. You could make a hot breakfast cereal out of them. There's a lot of things that you can do with these whole grains, even if you don't have a grinder just yet. And then the final bag back here is the most unfancy bag. It doesn't even have a nice label like the other ones, but this is whole oat groats. So it's basically whole grain oats. And this is another thing that um, we can use in our chicken feed. I used, I bought animal grade um, feed oats for my chicken feed so far and that's basically it's extremely inexpensive um it's the whole oat and it also has like the chaff on it the outer layer that you wouldn't really be able to eat that's the thing is that that's a feed grade oat and that's something that we wouldn't eat either and i do like storing the dual purpose this is a little bit more expensive but it's still pretty inexpensive for these whole oat groats and this is something that we can eat as well there's a lot of things you can do with the oat groats. You can cook them just like any whole grain. You can cook them and make um, like a breakfast cereal, a hot breakfast cereal. You can make a pilaf type of dish for dinner. You can grind these oat groats and make an oat flour out of them. You can do all sorts of different things with these oats. So this is another great grain to have in your food storage. And these whole grains are going to store for a very long time. The wheat berries will store 
for like 25 years if you package them properly in an airtight container um, with an oxygen absorber. And the oat groats, I read 10 to 15 years. I would be willing to bet they'd probably last as long as the wheat, but what I found so far is 10 to 15 years, but that's a really good long um, amount of time that you can store them. Okay guys, so I told you we had some larger items and here they are. The first item here that we have is another um, portable power station or solar generator. And this is by Opus. You know that we have one solar generator from Opus that we really like. That's the 1200 unit. And um, I did say that we were hoping to get a larger unit at some point. I think for our intents and purposes, we have decided that for now it's going to work better for us to have a few, um, you know, smaller solar units that we can use at different times, use in different areas of the home and things like that. So this is an Opus 1800. So this is a step up from the one that we already have. And we did get a solar panel with this. This solar panel is larger than the one that we have um, that we got with our other Opus. So this unit by itself is a portable power station. It's what they would call a portable power station because this doesn't need the solar panel. This can be charged either from a wall outlet or it can be charged from your vehicle. And then this um, would contain the power within itself. So you could have this charged up and you could have this just standing by ready to use in the event of a power outage. Of course, if it was a longer term power outage and the power stayed out um, long enough to drain this, then you would have to have a way to charge it back up. So I guess you could use your vehicle to charge it, but that's why we wanted to go with solar panels so that we can um, charge this via solar panels so that this can continue to provide us power on an ongoing basis. Now we just got this out of the box, so I do think it comes with some power. It comes charged up to 68%. We haven't charged this up at all, either with the sun or with the wall outlet, but we will charge this completely. Like I said, this can be charged from your regular wall outlet and it can be charged from a vehicle outlet and it be can be charged with the solar panel. And then it does have um, outputs here that will charge. Um, you can plug in a cigarette lighter type of plug. You can plug in all sorts of different USB and USB-C. Um, ports and then over here it has your regular um, outlets but backup power is definitely an important thing to think about in your preparedness plan I would say after food and water is taken care of that's one of the first things that you should think about if you talk to anyone who's living in a situation that we could find ourselves living in either war economic collapse um, dealing with rolling blackouts all sorts of things one thing that everyone's gonna say is make sure you have a source of backup power make sure you have something to charge your things and you know keep certain things powered our power grid is aging and frail it's very susceptible to cyber hacking and things like that all that on top of your everyday you know weather related power outages and things like that so backup power is definitely an important thing to think about now this is going to be very similar to the unit that we already have and we do have a video where we uh, reviewed that one and talked about that one so if you want to watch that video to find out more about the opus generators because this is very similar to the one that we already have it's just larger there is one larger unit Unit than this I believe that they have which is the 2400 but we have been very happy with the opus that we have we have used it we did have one power outage since we've gotten it we did use it during that power outage we've also used it when we've gone camping um, and things like that we've used it around the house sometimes mr. wicked prepared has to work in an area of the house where we don't have power like the attic or if he goes um, you know up high outside and he needs to have a power source it's also very handy for that it's a lot easier than running long extension cords if you're watching this on Easter Sunday 2023, follow my link in the description section below for 20% off this unit as well as huge savings on all their products. This deal ends today, the 9th of April 2023. And then the next thing that we have here, this is something I've been very excited about. This is an Abbott Armor chamber sealer. You can see that it has this chamber here. Now, I didn't even really know much about chamber sealers at all until we got our freeze dryer. And then they kind of got on my radar and I started to really want a chamber sealer. What this is, it's basically, it's a vacuum sealer, but it's kind of like a souped up version of a food saver. Because instead of using suction to remove the air from your packages, it uses um, vacuum pressure. And so you're able to do a lot more things. For example, you can seal things with liquid inside them, which you can't do with a food saver. You don't need to use the special food saver bags that have that special um, channeling inside. You can use Mylar bags. This will seal Mylar bags. This will seal retort pouches. So this is perfect for sealing your freeze dried food, sealing a lot of your dry goods. Um, one of the first projects I'm planning for this is I'm planning to make up some um, MRE packs, some homemade MRE packs and get them sealed up with, um, with this vacuum sealer.
You can do um, sous vide with this. You can do marinades that are liquid you can do in this. Um, you can do retort canning in this. I did look into it a little bit. I have seen people who have had success using this model right here with retort pouches um, without even changing the sealing bar or anything like that. Retort pouches and retort canning is a way of canning without using jars. It uses pouches sort of like mylar bags. Um, think about how you can get tuna fish in a pouch, for example, from the grocery store. It's that type of a thing. And I am very interested in that. I haven't started doing it yet, but um, this is something that I could use for that as well. And it did come with some accessories. It came with an extra ceiling bar and some, uh, it came with bags to start off with and some other accessories but we did order um this part up here is a mason jar vacuum sealer attachment um similar to what you can get with your food saver so we did get the mason jar attachment for this as well so we can use this for mason jars but i am very excited to use this um with mylar bags and things like that so we will definitely have some videos coming up i'm um, showing you how we use this and then over here, the final thing we have here is a couple of these sets of plastic um, food storage containers. They're actually meant for pet food, but I have seen plenty of people use these for food storage. They're definitely food safe and they have an airtight seal. If you look at the lid, they do have a gasket in here that makes this an airtight seal. Now each of these comes as a set. It comes with the larger container and the smaller container that sets on top of it. You don't have to keep them like that. Um, you can separate them, use this one on the floor and put the smaller one on a shelf. And they do come with um, wheels that you can use on the bottom unit. You don't have to use the wheels if you don't want to. And they come with a scoop as well. Now, I like these containers for storing dry goods that we get into a lot. You know I have a thing for rectangular and square containers because they make the best use of space. Um, you know, they fill corners and stuff better than a round or circular container. We're going to have to reconfigure how we store certain items because now that we've started making our own poultry feed, our own feed for our chickens and ducks, there's a lot of things that we're getting into a lot more often and using a lot more of. And so, for example, for our personal use, if I'm storing things away, I like to store things in smaller containers like gallon size mylar so that when we open up a package, we're going to use it up more quickly and not have to worry about keeping it fresh, bugs, things like that, especially if it were an emergency situation. But for some of those items like the wheat, like the split peas, like the oats, things like that that we're now going to be getting into and using a lot more of for the chicken feed, I had to rethink how we're storing those because it's not going to make sense to have them stored in small gallon size containers necessarily if we're going to be using them more quickly and in larger quantities. So I'm just going to try these two sets. These are two different size sets. Um, obviously one is slightly bigger than the other. I'm going to try them out. I'm going to see what quantities of ingredients that they work for and see you know, if they work for us one or the other or both. And then we will probably get more of these. All right, guys, this cold is literally hitting me like a ton of bricks, and I am really kind of running out of steam. So I hate to say this, but I think I'm going to have to cut this short, and we're going to have to bring you a part two for the rest of this haul. So definitely stay tuned to see the rest of what we have as soon as I'm feeling a little bit better. Thank you for watching today, and thank you for being a subscriber to our channel. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.